Hi, and welcome to the sixth video in our PowerShell 7.24 Intermediate Tutorial Series. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to interact with CSV files, so comma-separated uh, value files. Uh, you're going to probably deal with a lot of these types of files and XML files and JSON files, which we're going to look in uh, the next few videos as well. Um, but you're probably going to be dealing with a lot of these files from your HR department or from other software um, often will export into a CSV format. Um, and you can use PowerShell to parse them and just filter the data uh, quite easily and be able to create some nice reports uh, for managers uh, from Active Directory or even from some different services. So let's go ahead and let's actually take a look at some CSV files with PowerShell. So I actually created uh, two CSV files before this filming of this video. Um, so I have this CSV file with a bunch of employees that are comma separated. And I also have the same file, um, but we just separated them by semicolon, uh, just to show you guys the different ways of using delimiters. And you're not limited to only comma delimited files. You can use semicolon delimited files. You can use tab delimited files. I'm going to go over those different um, different options for you. So let's actually first go ahead and get started on loading the data into PowerShell. Um, so we've seen a commandlet to pull data from a file, and we've seen that as get content. So what we're first going to do is we're actually going to create a variable here to uh, hold in our CSV file path. So we're going to create a variable, and we are going to open the comma separated value. Uh, so let's just put in that file path here. And then what we're gonna do is we are just gonna create another variable called content. We're gonna make that equal to the get content commandlet and we're gonna do the path of our CSV file path. So let's go ahead and let's run this. And let's take a look at what is inside content. So right now in content, uh, we see the contents of our file but it's not really usable. Now, PowerShell actually has a built-in commandlet for CSV files that you can import that data in very, very nicely, and you'll actually get properties and be able to loop through the different data. You could probably use this data if you manipulated it with some for loops uh, and did some extra formatting to it, uh, but PowerShell already makes that very, very easy for you. So let's actually erase this get content line. Um, and we're just going to create a variable named called employee data. And we're going to make that equal to import dash CSV. And we're going to specify the parameter path. And we are going to put our CSV file path in here. And let's go ahead and let's run these two lines. And let's take a look at what is inside employee data. So here we have our employee data. So as you can see, we actually have our headers here, ID, name, title, and country. And we actually have our data here. So this is actually very, very nice. The formatting all came in really good. And what we can actually do with this afterwards is if we do an employee data dot get type here, just so we can see what kind of type this variable is, we can actually see that it is an array. So it's not an array list. What you could do is you could create employee data as an array list and then add in the import CSV and you would have an array list at that point. Um, but for the most part, if you're just importing a CSV, you're probably just going through the data. You're probably not really going to be adding values to it or manipulating data uh, directly in that CSV. Uh, so it's probably pretty safe to just use as an array. But if you do know that you're gonna be modifying that data, it might be a good idea to bring it in as an array list uh, because you're probably importing a lot of data or you might be adding a lot of data into that. So let's see what we can actually do with a for each loop here. So we've seen this in the beginner tutorial series um, because we have an array. So we can actually say for each dollar sign employee in employee data here. And actually, let me just correct this to be a lowercase e. And then we have our open and close bracket. Now, if we do a dollar sign employee uh, dot notation, we won't have anything that appears. So what I actually like to do here is just leave that for each empty. And if we run this here and we actually do a dollar sign employee 
dot, we will actually have our dot notation laid out for us. So we actually already have all the different properties from our employee um, data type or our employee object. So what we can actually do here, we're just going to do a write output in this case, but we're going to do a write output employee, and then we're going to do a variable wrapper. So that's just the dollar sign open and close parentheses. And let's do the employee dot name um, is a, and then another variable wrapper here. And we're going to put in their title. And we are going to say they are from and then another variable wrapper, and we're gonna put in the country that they're from. So we're bringing in quite a bit of data here, and let's run this for each loop. So here we have like employee Jane Smith is a programmer from Canada, and then we have all the other employees, and it says their title, and it says what they are from as well. So that should actually be really, really good. Now, what you would use this um, in an example, like a real life example, is if you got like a CSV file, uh, like in this case, it's an employee data file. If you had something coming from your HR department or you have a software that manages your employees and you can get like an export in a CSV, you can actually use this CSV to completely manage your Active Directory. Now, I actually have a full tutorial and a full project on how to manage your Active Directory through a CSV file and have it completely automated. Um, so there is that video. You can definitely check that out on my channel. Um, and that will actually bring you from the beginning to the end, all the way from having that CSV file, um, the configuration of the CSV file, creating the module to create users, delete users and modify users, um, because we'll actually check the name to see if there's been any name changes, any position changes, anything like that. So. Um, importing CSV files is very, very big in terms of PowerShell. Now we saw how to import a comma delimited file, but let's say we actually imported our file with the semicolon. So let's do the semi test here. And if we run these first two lines and we actually look at employee data, we will see that it doesn't actually look that good anymore. We have our, our header, but we only have one header and they're separated by semicolons, but they're all just one data. Uh, so if we actually look at the for each loop now, it's actually broken. It's not working correctly. We have employee blank is a blank uh, from blank. Uh, so we don't have anything here. What we actually have to do in the import dash CSV is specify the parameter delimiter. And there you can actually specify your delimiter. So if we put the semicolon delimiter here and we actually run this again, there we have it, it actually imports the data correctly. Now, if you were trying to import, um, let's say a tab delimited file, um, what you would do is you would actually do a back tick and then the letter T, and that would tell it that it is a tab delimited file. And then it'll import that just, as, just fine as well. So there are tons of different ways and tons of different uh, types of delimiter that you can use. I always, even if it's just a comma delimited file, I actually tend to use in all my scripts, I will still put the delimiter there. This way it's very easy to know, okay, it's expecting a comma delimited file. It's specified in the script. So if anyone goes and reads your script, it is very easy to see what it is trying to do. Now we've seen how to actually import CSV files, but the other very powerful thing in PowerShell is you, we can actually export to a CSV. So we can actually create comma delimited files from our data on the computer, whether this be from Active Directory, our services, or any of the other things that you can interact with PowerShell APIs. Um, and the list goes on um, forever, basically. What we could actually do here is let's use our commandlet that we use very often here to test things out, which is our get service commandlet, what we could actually do is we can actually export this into a CSV file. So if we do a get service and all we want in our CSV file, let's say is the name, the display name, the status and the start type. Um, the reason why we want the status and the start type is maybe we want to make sure that all the automatic uh, services, all the ones that are supposed to start up automatically are started and make sure that none of them are stopped. So let's do a get service here. 
we're going to do a select object, select dash object, and then a dash property. And let's do name, display name, status, and then status type. So if we actually just run this line here, we will actually see that everything kind of comes out uh, pretty nicely. It doesn't really come out nicely on this display here, actually. Uh, so if I just do a nether uh, pipe here, and we're just going to do that to a format dash table. That'll usually make it very nicely formatted for us with all the data that we want. Uh, which actually is still not coming up here. Um, but let's actually just pipe this over to export dash PSV. And what we're going to do is once we have that set to export dash CSV, we're going to give it a parameter of path. And let's put in that path here, which is going to be C backslash scripts backslash uh, for me, it's going to be intermediate tutorials. We're going to go into CSV files and we're going to name it test export dash CSV. And then we could give it the parameter of delimiter. So let's make that a um, comma delimited file. And then one other parameter that we're going to want to do is going to be the no type information. And let's go ahead and let's run that here. And once we actually have that, we actually get our file back. Uh, so we have our test export here and we actually have our full blown um, get service commandlet and the output of it with the status and the start type as well. So we actually have all those different properties in there. And what we could actually do as well is with this select object, we can even um, do, as we've seen, we can put expressions in our select statements. Uh, so if we do uh, very similar to a script block here, so we're going to put the at symbol and then a script block. So this is going to be um, like a hash table. And then we're going to do a key value or a name value pair. So let's do the name is going to be uh, comma uh, double quote time. And then we're going to do a semicolon and we're going to put in the expression and for the expression, it's going to be another script block. So we're going to do a open and close curly bracket here. And for that, we're just going to do a get date dash format because we want it formatted in a specific way for us. And we want it to be month month. So that's going to be uppercase M two times dash day day, which is going to be lowercase D's dash y y y y for the year and then we're going to want hour hour minute minute and then second second so if we actually go ahead and we run that again here we will see that we actually now have the time as well we can see that it is november 1st it's 8 56 32 um, at night here um so we don't have the PM or anything like that, but we do have that full time. So we can actually keep track if you wanted to keep a log of your service status. That is how you would do it. And if you want the hour in a 24 hour time format, I believe all you would have to do is actually change this to a capital H. And if we run that again and we go back into test export, we have 205707. Um, so the capital H will give you the time in the 24 hour format, whereas the, um, the lowercase H will give you the time in just the 12 hour format and the capital H will give you the time in the 24 hour format. And once again, if we just actually give this a try here, there we go. It was probably just going off the screen here for the other time where we tried to just do name, display name, status, start type, and uh, that was it but once i add the time here it actually does format it nicely into a table so here we can see all of our services as well so we could display it to the console um, but we can even do one better and send it over to our csv file i'm getting this error for a service uh, purely because i'm not running this as administrator and that service requires an administrator to get access to uh, so that's why there's a little bit of red on the screen right now 
Um, but that is how we would export CSV. Now, exporting CSVs are very useful, as I said a little bit earlier. Uh, maybe your boss wants a report of all the different user accounts that have never logged in yet or that have a password older than six months. Um, you can go ahead and get all the user data, select just the specific properties that they want, and then output that to a CSV file and then give that to them. And they could then open it up in Excel or whatever tool that they want to use it um, and then add some filters to it and look at the data very nicely. Uh, compared to just dumping that out in a text file. Uh, the CSV file does make that data look very nice. Um, and you can even use some of the import Excel modules that we've looked at on this channel and make it even nicer, maybe add some pivot tables or some graphs. So that is pretty much it for CSV files. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I think working with CSV files, I work with them multiple times a week. Um, so I think that this is very, very useful. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at JSON files um, and JSON in general, which is also going to be very, very useful for PowerShell because when you're interacting with APIs, it's always going to be in a JSON format usually. Um, and when we're working with Elastic in the next couple videos, uh, so we're going to be starting our Elastic videos in a couple weeks. Uh, we're going to be setting up our server and we are then going to be interacting with it all through PowerShell. So I'm going to be showing you guys that and that has a lot of JSON in it. So that next video with JSON will be very, very useful to know for that project. So if you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comments section down below. I will try my best to answer you guys directly or if it's something that will benefit uh, the majority, I will try to make a video on it as well. Also, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Also, make sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.